The Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, is in Ukraine visiting towns to the north of the capital, Kyiv, that have been badly damaged during Russia's invasion. He's visiting sites that have experienced Russian attacks and occupation ahead of a meeting with President Zelensky. It's thought they'll discuss how to evacuate hundreds of civilians from a besieged steelworks in the southern port city of Mariupol. So let's take a look at some of today's other developments. In a speech, the UK's Foreign Secretary Liz Truss said victory for Ukraine was a strategic imperative and Russian forces must be pushed out of the whole of Ukraine in what amounts to the clearest statement yet of the UK's objectives in the war. Meanwhile, Russia's President Vladimir Putin warns any country interfering in Ukraine it will be met with what he called a lightning-fast military retaliation. So let's have a listen now to what the head of the UN, Antonio Guterres, had to say when he arrived on the outskirts of Kyiv earlier. When uh, I see those destroyed buildings, I, I must say what I feel, I imagine my family in one of those houses that is now destroyed and black. I see my my granddaughters running away in panic, part of the family eventually killed. So the war is an absurdity in the 21st century. The war is evil. And when we see these situations, our heart, of course, stays with the victims, our condolences to their families, but our emotions are, there is no way a war can be acceptable in the 21st century. Look at that. Thank so you. Antonio uh, Guterres there in the uh, Borodyanka area north of the capital, Kyiv. So uh, let's now take a look at all the latest developments on the situation in Ukraine with our correspondent, Andrew Plant. The aftermath of a missile attack in the city of Kharkiv in northern Ukraine. At least one person is reported to have been killed here. The invasion has reduced much of this city to rubble. It's scary. It's so painful. When it's dark, we're in fear. When there is a shooting and when the evening comes, it's indescribable, unbearable. In a speech, the UK Foreign Secretary Liz Truss called for Western countries to push Russian forces out of Ukraine. Some argue that we shouldn't provide heavy weapons for fear of provoking something worse. But my view is that inaction would be the greatest provocation. This is a time for courage, not for caution. Now President Putin has sent a message to the West warning Ukraine's allies against further interference. If anyone from the outside intends to interfere in what's happening, then they should know this. If they create threats for us, threats of a strategic nature, our retaliation, our counter-strike will be instantaneous. In the southern port city of Mariupol, this steel plant surrounded by Russian forces, the last stronghold of Ukrainian fighters here. Their commander appealing for a mass evacuation, saying alongside 600 wounded soldiers are civilians, including children inside. Today, my appeal is apply the extraction procedure to us. The wounded will die and those who are alive will fall in the battle. Civilians will die together with us. Very, very many people have died in the city. The city has been wiped off the face of the earth. Andrew Plant, BBC News. The UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace told the BBC earlier today that it would be legitimate for Ukrainian forces to target Russian logistics. So first of all, under UN law, uh, a country that is being attacked uh, in the way Ukraine has, has a right under international law to defend itself. It is also under international law the right of that country to seek, uh, where there is an illegal invasion or attack, to seek 
other countries to come to its defence. It's called mutual self-defence. The United Kingdom, alongside many of those 40 countries, are using that law to effectively provide aid to Ukraine. Uh, when how Ukraine uses the weapon systems it has uh, is governed by uh, you know international law, Geneva Convention, uh, and all the rules of law. That's something that we feel very strongly about. But if it does so, it is perfectly right, Ukraine to use those weapons to defend itself. And part of defending itself in this type of invasion is obviously where Ukraine will go after the supply lines uh, of the Russian army, because without fuel and food and ammunition, the Russian army grinds to a halt and can no longer continue its invasion. So, uh, uh, you know, I don't know any evidence of, of the attacks that we have seen or the explosions we've seen in Russia have actually come from Ukraine state. But if Ukraine did choose to target uh, logistics infrastructure for the Russian army, that would be legitimate under international law. Uh, and if they did it, uh, they currently don't have British weapons that could do that. So it, it, it's they? unlikely that it is our weapons. But if they did it, it is legitimate and it is in line with international law. UK, the UK uh, Defence Secretary. Meanwhile, Washington says a first group of more than 50 Ukrainians has now completed training on howitzers. That's a long-range weapon the US is sending to the country. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby told a press briefing that the US is working hard to get Ukraine the weapons it needs. Munitions continue to flow into Ukraine uh, that the United States is, is helping coordinate. Uh, that continues to flow in there, including while we were uh, uh, overseas just over the last couple of days. Um, and that and that uh, and, and efforts to get those munitions in, into Ukrainian hands will also continue going forward as they are in a very active fight. You're asking, you know, do they have enough? I mean, I think that question is something that that changes every hour, uh, depending on their rate of consumption and what is actually going on on the battlefield. So it'd be a difficult question for me to answer, you know, here thousands of miles away at, at the Pentagon. All I can tell you is that we know they're they're expending rounds every single day of all different types and calibers. Uh, and we're doing everything we can. The flow continues to make sure that they, that they can stay in the fight.